Hmm, Timberborn is something else entirely like you've never seen. Imagine combining RimWorld and Minecraft, but the game features no enemies. What is the enemy then? Well, every week or so, a drought occurs, and the land turns from green, the color of grass, to gray, the color of ass, a diabolical concoction of game design, and one I've thoroughly been enjoying. Since I didn't want to be called a pansy, I played on hard. Please stop leaving such mean comments about me in the comments section. Uh, you're supposed to compliment me there. Okay? I settled on a name, Bavaria. After Beaver, because it's a... Get it? It's a pun? That's pretty... An explosion of beavers. They emerged from a hovel that teleported randomly onto the ass ground. We're not playing the tutorial map. The tutorial map is for babies. No, instead, we'll play on this tall plateau. Timber, I screamed with my mouth. The trees would know my teeth. How does Timberborn work, anyway? Hey, hey, I'm getting to that. There's water, right? It comes out of that head in the river, and it waters the fields. When the fields don't get enough water, and when the trees don't get enough water, that's right, they turn back to ass. You guessed it, good job. Mother did a very good job raising me. She used to say that idleness is the devil's workshop, so I put my beavers to work. That's not a sexual innuendo or anything. There won't be any of that, otherwise I won't, uh, I won't be able to make any money off of this video. What did I scream? Timber! We erected, that's not an erection joke, I'm just using it, uh, properly, to cut down some trees. <clears throat> wow. Holy sh- I exclaimed, I'm really smart. Every time that I play a new simulation game, I'm surprised by how smart I am. Learning all of the new tricks. The beavers are weird though, they, sometimes they walk on two feet, then on four. I can't really make up my mind whether I like them or whether they frustrate me. Well, let's get on with it. Food, water, and shelter. Those are the main needs of beavers. When you have them, you get to have beaver coitus. You have to meet all their needs though, but coitus is very desirable. And so we began our quest to get water out of the river. Very successful. We put it into a big cup. And oh, how we drank out of that big cup. It was like the ultimate 7-Eleven mega gulp. Except with just water. Then we built this farm. But you didn't guess what we're gonna do with it. That's right, we're gonna farm on the farm. Get ready for a few more curveballs I'm gonna throw at you. And so the beavers worked day and night. They slept on the ground at first because, uh, I don't have a... They don't sleep in houses. Well, they can later on, but that's when they'll have coitus. The drought was on the way three days from now. No matter, I'd played the tutorial, so I knew what to expect. Basically, when the drought comes, water stops spawning. So, you can, you can hold in the water if you build a dam. So, I checked where the water was narrowest in its flow, and that turned out to be at the waterfall. Two dam blocks, I suppose you'd call them, would work. That'd be enough. We could keep drinking, and we could keep watering our crops. Survival at its finest. Among all the shapes, I think that squares are probably the most satisfying. Imagine you, grappling with the intractable chaos that is water, splashing, sliding, but now it's just one big square. The beavers fashioned more dam squares. Yeah, well done, lads. Since the water keeps spawning in, it'll keep flowing over the dam. But when the drought happens, then there'll still be some water up here rather than none. So we won't have just ass on the ground. Eventually the drought did come, and the ground turned into- Yes, that's right, the color of doo-doo. There it goes. Goodbye, ground. I, or rather, just the grass on the ground. The ground itself stays. Droughts don't last forever, though. No, of course not. They go away in just a few days. But as the game progresses, the droughts get longer and longer and more harrowing. We can only speculate for now. What will happen to us. For now, we were merely just living on the top of that plateau. Watered. Nice, right? You drink out of a cup. Civilized. Wrong. We're beavers. Feral, adulterous creatures. Now the mission lay in civilizing them. That's right. Hmm. Carrots. That was the first step. Plant some farms. A warehouse. Oh, houses. Soon we'd be on to houses. Or at least motel sixes that they could live in. The fields were being planted by farmer beavers. Keep in mind that while we're doing all of this, everything around this small plateau was just dead. In the sense of, this is the last holdout of Bavaria. 
There's nothing like the quiet sense of desperation that quite motivates like anything else. I didn't want the water to run out because it's such a beautiful, tranquil shade of blue, and the grass such a tantalizing shade of green, picturesque. The carrots were planted, the beavers were quadrupedal again, and the logs were being accumulated toward important building projects, warehouses, homes, everything we'd need. You see, the beavers are fine with sleeping outside. Well, not really fine with it, but they w there won't be any coitus. Therefore, if there are vacant housing slots, the beavers will know it's time. There are humane species, caring even for the unborn among them. Building things in the order you set down orders. It's nice. With the carrots teleporting into existence on our farms, I knew it was time. We began the housing project. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Wowzers. It was time for, yes, that's right, coitus. This ushered in a new era of progress. Science, beavers. Anything for the sake of progress. Completing the building project, we paved, or rather rotated, our way into power with a wagon wheel. I mean a water wheel. This allowed for the construction of important planks. Technology. Well, not really technology. It's just rotating gears of wood. There's not anything conducting electricity in this world. Don't be silly. We aren't worshipping demons. At first glance, the UI of this game may seem all over the place, but it's fairly readable. I knew that I didn't have enough beavers, so I started placing campfires and rooftop terraces. These things promote social beaver life and uh, traditional family values, I suppose. They promote that the beavers should get it on. Progress. A second drought began, and the land turned, yes, once again to ass everywhere, except for on our blessed hilltop. However, this drought would be longer than the first one, almost a week in its full length. It's not that easy. Since the water stopped flowing, the water wheel stopped turning, and we would need to resort to manual beaver labor for power. So we constructed a beaver wheel. This is exactly what it sounds like. One guy just walks around, although it does take up a free beaver. So that's not so good, and it's not quite as powerful as the water wheel. Progress still demanded that we be constructing almost constantly. So we started planting new woods. The trees are the majestic pine, birch, and maple. The maple taking the longest to grow, but also yielding the most wood, and the most wood proportionally by day. Increasing marginal returns to one day of growth, as an economist beaver might put it. There's also an advantage to planting variety of crops. If you roast potatoes, the beavers will be more productive instead of loitering about like some of these ones. Hmm. The drought ended. The water flowed once again as it did weirdly in squares throughout the world. But I kind of like it when it flows weirdly in squares. It's nice. It's like I can understand what's actually going on. We researched, yes, stairs. This let us go up and down. You might look down upon us because we had to research our own stairs. Well, some people weren't born with all the advantages. The socialization of the beavers continued with rooftop terraces. And now, we find ourselves with a civilization on our hands. Suddenly, what was just a normal settlement has now evolved into a city, sustaining itself and growing. The next question I asked myself was, where to from here? We had such a big hilltop, and yet we had grown and expanded over the entire thing. There were only so many structures we could start with, and science could progress at only such a rapid pace. We needed to expand our land, and make way for new beavers and new dams if we wanted to continue our race, research faster, and then hopefully escape that droughted land. What is new technology? For us, it was potatoes. Diet means everything, according to the game. If you give beavers potatoes, they get stronger or something like that. I still have yet to verify this with real-life beavers, but I'm sure it's true. Stronger, faster, more productive beavers probably meant that we'd have a better shot at making it down to the ground and we'd need to use all that vital new stair technology that we just researched to build our way block by block down to even those uneven crags. We had a few options on various sides of the hill, but if I wanted to do more work, that usually meant more beavers. If you're watching my channel, you probably play a lot of simulation games. As far as I can tell, it seems that each beaver is in the employ of one line of work. If you want to do more things, simply put, you need more beavers. 
Two beavers can't do three jobs, of course not. Each one is like one widget in a factory. Somewhat satisfying. Like, like programming one big computer. But together they accomplish marvelous things. And there's nothing like that slight satisfaction of even just building a nice stairway down to a new level. A new frontier opened before our, uh, tales. After all, what other remarkable body parts do beavers possess? Well, we won't get into that now, but you have the internet. You can look that up on your own. The beavers construct in the order in which you, uh, order it. A stoic, methodical species. And so we continued our journey. Everything builds upon itself. The one fear in the back of my mind, and which did happen to me while I was practicing, I am very good at this game now, but all of my beavers died in one spiraling downward crapshoot. It was terrible. And so the population grew. Along with it, we prepared for larger, longer droughts. Every week or so, the land became more barren and desperate. In a picturesque fantasy, I imagined beavers diving from level to level in some utopian Old Spice commercial. An Atlantean metropolis. Amazing to say. But until then, the stoic, somber task of rucking our way down the river continued in a procession of ablutions, glorifying the river all the while as the source of life and great bounty. Ah, Bavaria, ah, light of the autumn, how I cry for thee. Hope of the world hewn out of wood. Your scientists will deliver us from the pitch-black intrusion of ignorance and into the shining age of enlightenment. So we made our way down the hill and into that valley. It seems a simple task, really, right? Capture enough water to pave the way for long-term growth. But all of the odds and ends you'll resort to to accomplish that goal are cattywampus, dispersed. Almost like real life. A wise man once said, life is what happens when you're making other plans. So too with Timberborn. All we wanted was the water. Amazing the ends to which we can climb in pursuit of some goal aligned with our survival and the proliferation of our race. So the colony continued down in labyrinthine fashion flowing and harmonizing with the river. The top level of water, contained. Now the lower fields we could dam up at a narrow point. Such is the way of progress. But ultimately, when you get right down to it, Timberborn is just about creating a giant water park for a bunch of beavers. Glorious in its visual realization. Except you need to drink out of the water slide that you're sliding down as you're building out of it, or you'll die. This may sound like an amusement park of torture, but I can assure you, even when you're being tortured, you'll enjoy it. So the beavers continued down the water slide of life and death, down the mountain, and into the valley. For in the back of my mind, I envisioned a major Noahic flood on its way. But rather than a Noahic flood of death, one of life. Almost like someone played the reverse Uno card on God himself. Of course, it was all fun and games until the river did actually dry up, at which point I realized I was thoroughly outmatched. No matter, only a half a day left until the water returned. Terrifying, though, nonetheless. Just as my ancestors fled Ireland with the terrible potato famine of 1845, so too did I know that terrorological terror, that cracking of Krakatoa underneath the vapors of the surface, that heart-renting heat, that you get it. Uh, I've made my point. So too did relief wash over my brow, as the waters of Lake Minnetonka once resurfaced, pooping out life onto everything on the surface again. Phew! I screamed and shouted in jubilation as the waters rushed over the dam, breathing blue lifeblood back into Bavaria. This is how it feels to play Timberborn. Nay, to live, to run and climb on hard gray faces, to exclaim in joy at the rushing of a waterfall, to embrace life in all its challenges, and to know the turning of the wheel of fortune. For it is not in comfort and stability that we know our character, but in the struggle along the way that led us to it. This one was a lot of fun. I recommend that you go check it out. As always, a major thanks to my patrons. I couldn't do without you. I hope you enjoyed. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until we meet again next time, my friends.